I'm Bob Short, and this is Reflections on Georgia Politics, sponsored by the Richard Russell Library at the University of Georgia. Our guest today is Carlton Caldwell, who spent more than three decades in the Georgia General Assembly re representing the Mountain Counties of Georgia. Carlton, we are delighted to have you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me. You're a native of Blairsville in Union County, up here in the North Georgia mountains. Tell us about growing up in Blairsville. Well, Bob, I lived, there were six boys in my family, and my father, we lived on a farm, and he, he worked for the public most of his life, and we farmed, and uh, I'm the last one uh, living of the six. Uh, I've lost five brothers, but we, we grew up, it was... Uh, we was poor, I guess, and didn't know it. But uh, we had a lot of love in our family, and my father was, uh, he was uh, real close to me. We were real close, and uh, we grew up down uh, on, right next to Nolly River, and uh, it was, uh, but we, we survived it all the time. Good. Well, Union County has produced several outstanding uh, public servants. In addition to you, let's, let's talk a little bit about Judge Tom Candler. Well, Judge Candler was a special friend of mine. He he was uh, real close to my wife, and uh, his law assistant was Effie Mahan, and they were big friends. And Judge just helped me tremendously when I was first elected to the General Assembly, and he was uh, just a great person. They had a lot of stories to tell, and so uh, he, I was real appreciative of all his friendship over the years. Well, tell us a Judge Tom Candler story. Well, Judge, uh, he told my wife when we was, uh, she was expecting our daughter, said uh, this, we'd had the, all boys, said, now, I know this is going to be a boy, so said, I want you to name it after me, he said, you name it. And, she, you know, she said, well, I don't know. It's kind of a winter. So <clears throat> when when she, we had the baby, why well, it was uh, Carla, our daughter, and he goes up to the hospital and tells her, says, you'll do anything you, in this world to keep naming uh, someone after me. So later on, we lost our, one of our little boys in, uh, in a car wreck, which has been real devastating to us over the years and so she was expecting again and she had this boy and uh, he called the hospital and said uh, you just don't do anything about that and said I'll be up there and he he went up there and wrote down Thomas Candler Caldwell so my youngest boy is named Thomas Candler Caldwell and he he was just a great storyteller he had a lot of them that he 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 would tell well, there's a district in Union County by the name of Choice Toy. It seems to me that it has produced more appellate court judges than any other section of the state. In addition to uh, Judge Candler, there was Judge William Henry Duckworth, who I'm sure you remember. I remember Judge Duckworth and, uh, and Judge Reed. Judge Reed was from here. Judge M.D. Collins uh, was school superintendent for years. And uh, it, it, like you say, Choi Story has produced some real famous people for this county, really. Yeah, well, also uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor, Governor, and United States Senator Zell Miller's family, uh, father's family, came from Choi Story. Governor Miller has a lot of relatives, and I guess he has more relatives in Union County than he does in towns. And his all of his people grew up there. I I never did get to know his father. His fathers did, but I knew his mother I, real well, and we had a lot of contacts with his mother over the years. Also, uh, Congressman Ed Jenkins came from Union County. Congressman Jenkins is a dear friend of mine. He he was, uh, went with uh, Congressman Landrum. He went up there with him when Congressman Landrum. And uh, retired, he ran and was elected. Let me tell you a story about that. He was in Gainesville when the first election, 
and they get the returns from different counties. And so they come in from Union County, and he was leading. Uh, the, I think he'd got about 91 or 2 percent, and they said, uh, uh, what do you think about that? Well, he said, I'm a little dismayed. I thought it ought to have been around 96, 98. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is it. He's been very popular in this county over the years. Well, let's get back to Carlton Caldwell. Uh, you ran for the General Assembly in 1964. What, what, uh, why did you run? Well, I came back. My father worked in uh, he he worked for the county for years kept up the roads in the county and just they scraped roads you know they didn't have uh, access to quarries or gravel and i saw him try over the years to uh, <clears throat> keep the roads in better shape and uh, he was a friend to mr jim gillis and mr jim gillis told me said i want you to run for the senate and uh, I had uh, worked at General Motors for about 12 or 14, about 12 years. And uh, when my father died, I came back, took his job for a while. And uh, Mr. Jim said, you run for the Senate. Well, I was, uh, at that time, uh, you know, Governor Miller, or Representative, he was a Senator Miller then. and. Uh, and we shared every two years. We had three counties, Rayburn, Towns, and Union. And uh, he was the, the senator at the time. And then I was supposed to replace Senator Miller. And it was Union County's time. So I ran in the early primary. Well, they uh, reapportioned the Senate. And I, I didn't get to serve any time in the Senate, so uh, I waited uh, uh, two years, ran for the House because I, uh, I just had a deep burning feeling that I needed to, if I could do anything, they had the Rural Roads Authority and I didn't think we had been, uh, got our share of that, so I ran. Basically, I guess that was the biggest thing. Another thing was a school, that we we needed some new schools and we was building a hospital. So I ran for the house then, served one year in the house and they reapportioned the house. Half of the house had to run after one year. Well, guess what? I was one of the ones that had to run again. And uh, I had to run against a man that had been in the house for 15 years. and But I was elected and I never thought I'd serve 30 years in the House of Representatives, but uh, I uh, I did, and I sometimes I wonder if I served too long. But uh, the biggest thing that that bothered me was was being away from my family, and uh, it it put a burden on my wife. That's one thing that that's always kind of bothered me that I had to be away, and she had to raise the kids, and so. But uh, it it was it it was a great privilege. You you meet more friends. I had met more friends, and I still have friends all over the state. That uh, you don't make any money down there, but you sure uh, create a world of friends. In fact, Bob, I think I met you years ago, and down there you was one of the first ones after I was elected. That. Uh, that I met, who's been my good friend all these years. Well, thank you, Carlton. And I remember that I was working down in the in the governor's office at the time. Uh, let's talk a minute about campaigning in the mountains. It's very difficult, isn't it, to get out to meet all these folks scattered all over the hills up here? It sure is, and that's uh, we we would talk about that, especially in reinforcement. It wasn't too bad. I with the first. Uh, time I ran was, uh, of course, I just had Union County. Then the next time I ran in uh, Union and, and Lumpkin. Well, mountains are barriers, uh, and you know, a map don't show that. It shows flat, and 
And uh, a lot of times it's hard to uh, get them to take in consideration just how uh, hard it is to run with all these mountains. And, and they are barriers to a degree when you, when you have to run. And uh, Ralph Twiggs was a special friend of mine. We had post one and two, and we, at one time we had seven counties in this northern district. And it's very difficult, I'll tell you, and, and very to uh, cover seven counties. Well, I grew up in these mountains, as you know. And uh, when I think back, I can remember when there were very few paved roads. Well, we were... Like, like I said in the beginning, we were just in dire need of, uh, of roads that was passable. And uh, I, I know in your county over there of Rayburn, the first thing that when I ran in uh, Rayburn that they wanted was a bridge, uh, uh, that one lane bridge on 76 that uh, was in dire need. and. Uh, that was one of the things that we went to work on and got that bridge there. That, uh, and it was all over the district. And uh, of course, I contributed a lot to uh, Mr. Jim Gillis that he, uh, you know, he helped this area tremendously and him from South Georgia. But you know, looking back, I had so much good help that, uh, you know, Governor Miller was in, Ed Jenkins, Congressman Jenkins was there. So we had, I was kind of the peon, I guess, and and they, I had great help in doing all the work that I accomplished up here. Getting back to the reapportionment and your election to the Senate, uh, there's a story there. Would you mind telling us that? Well, of course, I ran and... Uh, like I say in the early in the early primary and thought I was going to be the senator and uh, but uh, like I say they reapportioned that uh, that in that uh, that year in a special session and so that's when uh, uh, Miller uh, Senator Miller was in and he he ran and uh, I didn't run in that but so then I ran in the House, uh, like I say, two years, and Judge Candler, I'll never forget what he told me. He said, uh, sons, it looked like the federal judges don't want you to be down there in that house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, if, you, if you had decided to run in that district, then you would have been running against uh, Senator Miller. That's right. And I, I knew better than to do that, so I, I just I waited and ran for the House in two years. Without opposition. Without opposition. Good. Okay, so now you're elected uh, uh, for the second time to the General Assembly. Uh, let's go back to your first term. Let's talk a little bit about your first term. Uh, you got down there, and amazingly, you got on two of the most powerful committees in the House, Appropriations and Ways and Means. That doesn't usually happen. Now, please tell me how that happened. Well, I don't know. I uh, I was told, uh, I was told, said, put in for your committees, and you put in for your committees. But about everybody put in, you know, for appropriation and ways and means. And uh, I, I contributed a lot of that to uh, Mr. Jim Gillis was a friend of mine. Mr. Brack Blaylock was a good friend of mine. And, you know, uh, that was when Governor Sanders was, he was the governor. And uh, <clears throat> evidently, I put in for it and, uh, and was awarded it. I don't know, I was, I was real fortunate to be on, and I served the full 30 years on appropriation. But I didn't, I didn't like the ways and means. Uh, uh, and uh, George Bagby was uh, chairman of the ways and means when I went in. And uh, so I, I loved old George, but the, the things that, that uh, ways and means just wasn't exactly what I was, uh, what I thought it was maybe. And uh, uh, that's when the speaker, George T. was speaker then, George T. Smith. And I served one year 
on the Ways and Means. And when I got reelected the first year, uh, he he asked me if I'd like to come off that. And I said, yeah. And he said, what do you, you want? And I said, I'd like to be on State Institution Property Committee, in which he put me on that. And I served the rest of my term on that. Later became chairman of that committee. 22 years on that committee. Yeah, 22 years. Yeah. That's real longevity. Uh, you mentioned George, uh, the, the Smiths. There was George L. Smith, and then he was succeeded by George T. Smith. Uh, tell us uh, what you remember about Speaker George L. Smith. George L. was, uh, he, was uh, uh, he was a real good friend of mine. He, uh, at, the, at the time, now George T. was first, and then he came back in. I think he had been speaker before George T. And, and then when uh, uh, Sa uh, Governor Sanders went in, George T. was speaker. And then when uh, Maddox, Governor Maddox was elected, George L. came in. And uh, he was a very firm man. He was, he was real firm. But, uh, and he appointed me as chairman for the first time. That's when uh, when that vacancy came open, I asked to be considered, and he did. He gave me the first chairman, George L. did. That was a state properties. It's a state institution property committee, yes. Well, you had that experience in 1967 of electing a governor. Do you remember that? Very well. That's when Peter Zach Gere presided over the joint session, and, uh, you know, he made national uh, the national television on that that uh, they thought he was a great fellow. He, Peter Zach was a real smart man and he he, he was lieutenant governor at the time and he presided. And uh, we all, we had to go and vote at that. And I'll never forget, I think there was seven of us that uh, uh, had supported uh, Governor Maddox at the time at, uh, when he had the runoff. And uh, he used to take us to a dinner every year, the seven of us. And, uh, you know, he, he, was, uh, he, he was a great friend of mine. I loved, I loved uh, Governor Maddox. He, and I think he did a good job as governor. He, he really helped education. You know, Sanders left. Governor Sanders was a great, he was a progressive, he was a real progressive governor. And he had left a budget more uh, in the, that left some surplus, which was kind of hadn't been done before. And uh, I never will forget that uh, Governor Maddox, we, uh, he put me on his fiscal affairs committee, and I was on the appropriation committee at the time. And uh, we gave the, gave the teachers at that time twelve hundred and fifty eight dollars, I believe it was, uh, uh, raised that year, which made him very supportive of education. That was a uh, that was a period when. Uh uh, there was no winner in the general election. That's right. And so it went to the House. But let me ask you this question. Uh, how how were you lobbied for your vote uh, during that uh, period? Uh, did did you talk to Congress, Congressman Calloway was, uh, was the Republican and Maddox was the Democrat. Uh, how hard did they work for your vote? They... It was one call after another one. <laughs> I had tremendous. They was uh, they was really working the the uh, the telephones, and uh, they had a lot of people out that that uh, uh, as you know at that time, and uh, uh, Carmichael got into that too, and uh, so they was trying to Bo Calloway that uh, from, of course he's from. Uh, down in LaGrange area, and uh, uh, he he had a pretty good lobbying effect going for it, but uh, when it finally wound up, of course, as you know, it's, uh, uh, he, he lost in the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk for a minute about uh, 
some of the things that you were able to do for the state of Georgia. You were on the uh, uh, State Institution and Property Committee. You were chairman. Uh, that's a very, very big responsibility. <clears throat> well, it was, and I, I really didn't, I, I knew it when I first went on the State Institution Property, uh, I was not on the Penal Committee, and uh, I was on the uh, Ports Committee, which uh, I really enjoyed in, uh, in my line of work that I, that I had dealings with them and, and the ships coming in and with machinery. But uh, after I became chairman, uh, it consumed me just about it in, in the penal. We, it was just, I guess you'd say it was, uh, all our presence was in such disarray and, and uh, it was, we didn't have, at that time I think we had about 4,000 uh, inmates in the prison, and which now I think we have fifty thousand. But we we started and work on that, and it was a it was a real challenge because, uh, as you know, Bob, that uh, it's not too popular to uh, to do a lot in corrections. Let's face it, the people most people say lock lock them up, throw away the key, and. And you know we got to have a better situation than that because uh, they're still human beings, and some of them are that you can rehabilitate and and had to be. So we it it costs the state a tremendous amount of money, and uh, I guess uh, you know that uh, uh, you know Lester Maddox, Governor Maddox, when he went in, he took an interest in it. Governor uh, Joe Frank Harris took a big interest. Governor Miller, I guess there was more bed space built during uh, Governor Joe Frank Harris and Governor Miller than in any other two administrations. Did you deal uh, at all, Carlton, with, uh, with correctional legislation? Oh, tremendous amount, tremendous amount. We, and we visited other, uh, I know we, uh, visited other states to see what they were doing and, and trying to uh, come up with plans. And we we really built it, uh, our prisons, uh, bed space was cheaper than about any other state in the southeast, and we built good prisons. Uh, let's talk for a minute about your work on the Constitutional Revision Commission. Yes, that was something. I, uh, I was out of state, and uh, Speaker Smith, uh, spe no, Speaker Speaker Murphy called me and wanted, asked me if I'd serve on it. And I said, well, if you want me to, you know I'm going to serve. And uh, I wondered why he wanted me on the, that. And I had passed, I had introduced a bill uh, late. Earlier on, uh, there's a boy from uh, in Savannah that uh, co-signed it with me and uh, uh, Jones of, of the, and we put that you anybody that was uh, sentenced to capital punishment would have to serve thirty years and uh, so it came up. In, in the Constitution, and the Speaker called me in, and he said, uh, Colin said, I want to talk to you about this, that we're going to be on that today, and I want to talk to you about this bill that you passed. It was a constitutional amendment, passed by 87 percent. And he said, uh, they have researched that and said, we've been living in a kind of, that if anything happened that somebody could have been uh, uh, had the, where the laws would have said that uh, you know they could have got a reprieve uh, it was so tightly written and said that uh, we need to change it 
And I said, well, I didn't intend for that. And he said, well, I know you didn't. And he says, we won't change that. But he says, I want you to help with it. And I said, well, I'll be glad to do it. So we put it, but, uh, you know, they could be if you was uh, declared innocent, you could you could get out of that. But that I think it's still on the books. I believe if it hadn't been changed since I left, that you have to serve 25 years if, if you're under capital offense. Speaker Murphy, uh, you mentioned Speaker Murphy. I know that you were a very close friend of the Speaker's. He was a great, he was one of the greatest friends I've ever had. I, I, I loved him and he just, uh, he he loved my family when I, he he helped me with everything that I ever wanted to do. I, I, I don't know what I could accomplish without Speaker Murphy, really. He was, he was just a great fellow. And I think he has been misrepresented to, to a large extent. He, uh, you know, a lot of people in Atlanta would get on uh, him and, and write about him and do and He's done more for the city of Atlanta, I think. Yeah, and I know you know, Bob, but what he, he, uh, there was not a, and he, he didn't have a racial bone in his body. He, uh, he did so much for the, everyone. He treated everyone uh, with respect. Now he was tough. Now he was tough, but you didn't want to lie to him. Just tell him the truth, and you got, you got along fine. I I think I lost one of the greatest friends I ever had when he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of uh, uh, Speaker Murphy, uh, you and Speaker Murphy were uh, in the House when the first African Americans came to the legislature. What was the tenor of those times? Well, it was, it was, well, tensions was running so high. It, it just, it, it runs so high that, uh, that uh, uh, we, we was in there that uh, uh, when we, when that happened, you know, Julian Bond uh, was selected to the House and, and, uh, that caused a big uh, uh, turmoil in the house, and uh, but uh, it it was it was real sad. It was real sad to see that we had uh, that much tension in the house and the Senate at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk for a minute uh, about the bond situation. Uh, uh, Representative Bond had made some statements uh, that. Uh, upset members of the House, so they refused to seat him under the rules of the House. But there was a Supreme Court decision that required uh, his seating, and uh, he was finally admitted. That's right. He, and then he served on my committee after he was, uh, he was seated. After, when I was chairman, of course, I was not chairman at that time, but later on, he was one of my committee members. And then he went over, was elected to the Georgia That's right. Uh, Senate. He went to the Senate then. That's right. There were, there were other uh, uh, rather outstanding African Americans in the legislature at that time. Of course, uh, uh, Leroy Johnson had been elected to the Georgia Senate, but uh, you had, uh, uh, for example, Hosea Williams, who was a well-known civil rights leader. You knew Hosea. Oh, I knew Jose real well. He was, uh, he is a, a very colorful uh, uh, fella, I tell you. He, uh, I got along with him fine. He was, uh, uh, but, uh, he, he was very colorful. And uh, I've got to tell you this story about him. He was, uh, they had incarcerated him out in DeKalb County and we had a special session and uh, during that time that he was incarcerated in DeKalb County, uh, the jail, and uh, so I think, and he we was that was election year, and he had uh, two or three people running against him. But we, when we met in the special session, they let him come to the special session every day, 
And one night we was, uh, the speaker asked, said, uh, do you all want to work on later on tonight or do you want to adjourn and come back tomorrow? Jose got up, held his hand up, and says, "Mr. Speaker, says it's all the same to y'all. So just work as late as you can." He said, "I'd like to stay here rather than go where I'm going." But the, at the end of that story is, he won that race without runoff. And him, him incarcerated. He was, yeah. he was a very colorful fellow. Cynthia McKinney was a rather controversial member, and she was on your committee. She was on my committee. Yeah, she was, she, she was uh, uh, very, she was colorful too, I guess. Do you remember, uh, was she very cooperative with you as chairman? Well, to a degree, she, uh, she was, uh, uh, had her own ideas a lot that was different to mine that, uh, that she didn't, uh, prove of my chairmanship a lot of times. Let's talk for a minute now, Carlton, if you will, about governors who served with you in the legislature. Lester Maddox was never in the legislature, but he was succeeded by Jimmy Carter, who was in the Senate. I'm not sure he was there when you were in the House. But you remember Jimmy Carter, I'm sure. Yeah, I, he was in the Senate. I, I served in the House. He was a senator, and then he ran for, for governor. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I served w with him in, in the Senate. I mean, I was in the House, and he was in the Senate. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with him while he was governor? He, well, I had a real good relationship with him. He... Uh, I was on his, uh, when he changed the Constitution, uh, well, or not the Constitution as much as, of course, a lot of them was of the, uh, when he took a lot of the uh, departments and reorganization, you know, of state government. Mm -hmm. And uh, I helped him with that because I, and. Uh, of course, I was criticized some for helping him with that. A lot of people didn't think, but I think it wound up to be the best thing to happen for Georgia. Mm -hmm. And he was he was a very good friend. I, I still have contact with him from time to time. But uh, he was uh, he was a real good friend of mine. Then there was George Busby, who you served with. As he was, as I recall, your majority leader. When, uh, when he was in the House? Governor Busby was, I guess, one of the hardest working men I've ever known. He, uh, he was a majority leader. He worked tirelessly. He worked tirelessly when he was governor. He was a great governor, good friend of mine. And I just, I hated so bad to see his life cut short because he was, he was such a great, great, great governor and a great friend of mine. Uh, let's get back for a minute to the Appropriations Committee. Uh, that's really where the action is. Well, that's true. And, uh, of course, as you know, when uh, Governor Maddox was elected, we got our, uh, we, uh, that's when George, uh, George L. Smith became Speaker, and we got our independence back. And, uh, uh, Sloppy Floyd was elected chairman of, of the appropriation, and he died while he was in office, as you well know. But that was a, uh, it was, he he had a burr under his saddle about people buying uh, uh, these typewriters, and he, he just said, so George Baby and I one time took him up one of the old model carriage type and uh, presented it to him at the appropriation committee but he was uh, he was a good chairman he he looked after the business of the of the state i thought real well how do you go about getting appropriations uh, in the bill uh, as a representative from the north georgia mountains well you 
it takes a lot of work, and you you have to line up a lot of friends that uh, that uh, will help you in it. And uh, I was real fortunate; they were they were good to me. I I don't know, but uh, this. Like I said before, I, I had some awfully good friends that helped me in my tenure in the in the house, and uh, we I think we accomplished a lot through when, like I say, Governor Miller and, uh, and Congressman Jenkins and, uh, was there, and uh, so, but but I really appreciate all the help that they they gave me. Then there was. Uh your friend Joe Frank Harris, who also had been chairman of the Appropriations Committee. It doesn't hurt to have a friend as chairman, does it? No, sir. Joe Frank, Governor Harris, and I went the same year to the General Assembly. We were especially close, and um, they told us I, he, he came to me and said he was going to run. And I told him, I said, well, I'll be for you or against you, whichever one you think will help you the most. <laughs> he he told that a lot over the state, but Joe, uh, Gunnar Harris was a great friend of mine. He, I think he did a, a great job as as governor of this state, and he and Elizabeth were were just a fine couple. And uh, he, you know, he when he started to work, he. He's the one that started no taxes, and he ran on a no tax platform, and that's I think probably what elected Governor Harris when he and he succeeded uh, the, the appropriation when uh, when uh, uh, Sloppy Floyd died, he took over then. I, I believe he served about eight years on appropriation. Let me tell you what Governor Harris said about you. Your early support and encouragement was instrumental in my decision to run for governor, and your hard work and advice enabled us to win. Well, I appreciate that. I, uh, I did support him. Uh, I went all over the state for him. I, uh, I did what little I could. I don't know how much good I did him, but uh, for him, but uh, I... Uh, I really appreciate his friendship, still appreciate his friendship. I talked to him not long ago. Then Zell Miller came along, and you became the representative of the governor. That's right. You lived in his district. Did he lobby you much? Well, not not too awfully much. We had, you know, growing up here, I guess our minds were pretty much the same, and of course, uh, he would lobby, uh, you know, on, on some of the issues, and I tried to, uh, I tried to support him, and in, in, especially in all his endeavors in the, uh, on the corrections and pardon and parole that was pertained to my committee, and, and uh, we, we worked tremendously close together on all those issues. Well, actually, uh, you and he served together in state government from the time you were first elected, and from the first from the time that he was elected lieutenant governor. That's right. Let me tell you what Zell Miller said about you. I got to know a lot of folks in my many years in politics, and I can honestly say I never have known a more effective public servant than Carlton Caldwell. Well, that's that's very complimentary. I mean, I I hope I could live up to that because I I really appreciate his friendship, him and Shirley, both. That uh, they've they've been my friends over the year, and and I appreciate that. I appreciate him, uh, and of course we you know he was a great educational governor. He he did so much for education as well as all other agencies. He sponsored the lottery. Uh, what was your position on the lottery? Well, at the time I had told him uh, that came up in uh, the year before, and I made a statement that uh, I would not vote for the lottery. 
And he called me and told me, and I said, uh, he asked me to vote, and I said, well, I said, I can't vote for that. I said, I, and I was just wondering, I said, can that be passed? I said, he said, well, I think it can. And uh, he said, I'd like, and I said, and, but he know he did not pressure me. He said, he said, I understand if you're committed. And so I did not vote for it on the first go around, but it was, of course, that's been the best thing that ever happened to the state of Georgia as far as education. And I think you also served with Roy Barnes, who was Georgia's next governor following Miller. Well, no, I didn't serve under him while he was governor. I served with him when he was in the House and in the Senate. He he sat on the same row with me. Roy Barnes was one of the smartest individuals, one of the finest men I've known. I, I, I cherish his friendship. I think he's 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 just super bright, and uh, I I really like uh, Roy Barnes. Let me tell you what Roy Barnes had to say about you. The years we served together, Carlton Caldwell, was one of the finest and best I've ever known. He was personally above reproach, always honest, and to a young legislator like me, he was there and his door was always open. You were one of his mentors. Well, that's very flattering coming from him. Uh, he was, uh, I used him more, I think, than he used me. I, I'd go to him with, uh, for advice on, uh, on legislation. And uh, he, was, uh, he reminded me kindly of a, of a fellow that served from South Georgia, Mr. Emory Rowland, who was a lawyer and uh, when I first went there, and he'd say, now, I'm going to tell you what I think about it, but now you make up your own mind in the end. And mm -hmm. so he was he was great to give you, but he, you know, he was just a great individual in my book. Well, speaking of mentors, uh, is there anyone special you looked up to when you first went to the legislature? Well, they were, uh, you know, there was a lot there that, uh, Denmark Groover, I think, was one of the best legal minds I've ever seen. He was a great friend of mine. Wash Larson, he was a he was a legal mind. Elliot Levitas, he he was just all these people were just super bright. But you know, uh, I guess Speaker Murphy is was that I look to I guess more than anybody in the house because he was always fair to me. And later, uh, we became friends early on when they had the railroad fight. And I was for the l and he was. And we, we just created a bond that, uh, that lasted all the time that I served in the, in the house. Let's talk for a minute now. You mentioned Denmark Groover. Uh, there was an expression they used in the legislature when Denmark was a member, uh, called Grooverizing. Tell us what Grooverizing means. Well, that's that's what when you'd have a bill and uh, it would be in, in legal terms, and uh, you would always hear this. Uh, someone would get up and say, "Has this bill been Grooverized?" <laughs> so that that was the uh, ultimate. In fact, when that was done, that was that was it. In other words, as Denmark Groover looked this bill over, somebody once said that Denmark Groover could change the complete meaning of a bill by changing one word. He he could critique a a, a bill better than anybody I've ever seen. I, I just he was amazing. He was amazing to me. I I just. Uh, and he was so calm about it that, uh, that he, when he, uh, but he was a super bright. Do you think that uh, that uh, Representative uh, Groover's uh, participation in the flag issue when Governor Barnes had the flag changed made a difference in the House? 
Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's no doubt. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some more of your friends in the legislature. Uh, Bill Lee. Bill Lee, he was the dean of the house. He was quite a fella. He was comical. He was, um, everybody I reckon loved Bill. I've seen that be the time when uh, tensions would get so thick, you know, you could just nearly cut it with a knife, and uh, he'd get up there and say something to the speaker, get his microphone, and uh, him and the speaker, that would break the tension. He was great at that. I, Bill Lee's a great friend of mine. I, I cherish his friendship, and he was he's a great legislator. Chairman of the Rules Committee. Chairman of the Rules. Everybody would, he had a congregation every morning when the, when the rules set in that they wanted to go hear Bill Lee. <laughs> Marcus Collins. Marcus, he was, uh, Marcus Collins was one of the, the uh, tax people that uh, he, he wanted to help rural, rural Georgia. And he 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 was tough. He was chairman of Ways and Means, and uh, he was a great legislator. He later became, you know, commissioner of revenue. And Marcus came to see me. He was in a wheelchair about two years ago, and I don't think Marcus is doing too well now. But he was a great friend of mine. He was a great legislator. When he he knew he knew a lot. Of tax. He was a good tax man. How about Bubba McDonald? Bubba McDonald was was chairman of the appropriation, and uh, Bubba McDonald, I think, was uh, he he was real smart in the tax area. And I remember one time when we was in double digit uh, inflation, that we could have uh, paid off all bonds within about four years. That I co-signed the bill with him, and he, uh, uh, but we didn't get it then go, but uh, Bubba's been a special friend of mine over the years. Uh, let me ask you this question, Carlton. In 1990, uh, uh, Bubba was a candidate for governor uh, at the time that Zell Miller won. Now, Bubba was a great friend of yours, and Miller was a great friend of yours. How did you decide what to do? Well, I told him at the, at the time, uh, at, that was at the time, and uh, it, it really put me on the spot. That's the worst spot I've ever been in in politics. And uh, so uh, what happened was uh, he helped me uh, the, uh, get a uh, school up here, Bubba did, and the speaker put a little pressure on me too. So I went with Bubba in the primary, and we went as soon as it was over and met Governor Miller and over in Gainesville and told him we had sinned and we'd like to join up with him. So that was, uh, so I, that was the, uh, in the early primary when the, and we, I believe it was a runoff in that, wasn't it? Yes, uh, Miller and Andrew Young. Yeah, and so Bubba and I both went and, and uh, supported him in that. When you look around these mountains, Carlton, up here there, there are many monuments that, uh, well, to Carlton Caldwell. You got Highway 515, you got schools, you've got uh, prison facilities, you've got, uh, you've got uh, the technical schools. Uh, how, did you, how were you able to accomplish all of that? Well, Bob, like I say, I had a lot of good help. I, you know, that may be maybe overstating for a lot of that that I did, but uh, I worked real hard on the uh, Appalachian Road. That was uh, one of my uh, hardest work that I did because these mountains, it was just, we needed it so bad, I thought, and I got a lot of criticism on it. And, I, they, and it caused me to get opposition time or two. But uh, I thought that we needed it and uh, I think it's I think it's been a savior for this area here. The schools I always tried to support education, and uh, we got the technical school. Uh, 
uh, they had awarded that to uh, Dawson County, and they got into a political fight over there about it. And I told Ralph, and we went to see uh, Governor Miller, and uh, and, uh, so I told him that we had a place for it in Union County I'd like to see, and he said, well, you all work it out, and he supported us in that. And that's how that came there. And Ralph Tweaks was a big, he he was a big uh, participation in that. Ralph, of course, was a state representative also from this area. You served many years with Ralph. How long were you all together? Well, we sat side by side for for years. I believe uh, for about twenty two years, and then I think he served about thirty or thirty two years in there. But I've been out a good while, so we served together about tw- over 20 years. I can remember working down in the governor's office when people would come down to the governor's office and uh, requesting some favor, and we'd say, go see Carlton. <laughs> well, they, Because you could do it better than we could. No, I wouldn't say it. But they, they used me on, on corrections and a few things like that, but... Uh, I, I tried to support, uh, but when I became chairman of State Institution Property, I really didn't realize how much pressure I was under until I retired. And uh, it's that that committee does cover a world of a lot of uh, the state facilities, and uh, and you're involved in about everything that goes on. Does that include the state ports? The, the state ports were one of my subcommittees, and that was uh, uh, that's you know the, the ports is a big is is a big thing for uh, for Georgia. I mean they, they Georgia ports is tremendous in the economy mm-hmm. of, of the state. Well, tell us a little bit about the uh, different classifications of uh, of state property and how you deal with it. Well, of course, we handled the, uh, uh, of course, there's two agencies that can buy and sell property in the, in the state, and that's the Department of Transportation and Board of Regents. But the rest of it, we, we handled it there in, uh, in the legislature. And, uh, you know, we, we own a tremendous amount of property in Georgia and we also in Tennessee. The state owns the railroad from Atlanta into Chattanooga. They own property up there, and uh, we we sold part of it while I was chairman up there, and uh, to the city. And uh, it's uh, it it creates a lot. I when I became chairman, I just didn't realize the impact that uh, the property that we had in Atlanta where the, the old Henry Grady was, that's property that was leased to Mr. Portman for I think a hundred years and they built that there. We, down where uh, the uh, uh, well, the air rights the air rights in uh, where the uh, uh, down at the end of the uh, uh, where the railroad starts, mm-hmm. uh, that was zero one, right? And uh, that was a tremendous thing that I that I never thought about. That uh, that was know, the World Congress Center, uh, the World Congress Center, and all down the there. Omni Complex and the Omni and in Atlanta. So, in Atlanta, so yeah. they own a lot of property, a tremendous amount of property. Well, you've also were responsible for building a lot of prisons, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, how, how do you decide where to locate those prisons? Well, we tried to locate them in a, in a, where people wanted them and where the the counties were, uh, you know, needed employment, and they would give us land. A lot of them would give us land to to put the prison on, and uh, so that that was a big thing in, in what we did. We we tried to put them in counties that uh, that needed employment and uh, they're they're pretty good 
they're, they got a good payroll, you know. What is your assessment of our prison system from the time that you were first elected until present day? Oh, there's no comparison. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was really chain gang when when I went there. That's about the way that everything was determined then. And it, we had so much, so much to do that uh, uh, it was just uh, inhumane, really, at, at that time. And I think Georgia has come, has come a long ways in, in the prison system. Uh, Governor Maddox took a great interest in A great interest, the, the a prison. great interest. Yeah, he visited some. I went with him to visit some. Yeah, I, was, I visited with him. He just... He he really took an interest in that. He was, and uh, I think he started uh, ball to rolling that the interest to get going on prisons. What was the sawmill gang? Well, we were in in the back, right uh, left hand corner from the speaker, and there was me and Ralph Twiggs. Build over and uh, uh, Walter Cox and I don't know several of us back there and we'd get I guess a little ruly, uh, unruly at times and at uh, I was standing up and so Mr. Speaker he said he called me and he said. Where'd you learn to whisper? Working at a sawmill? <laughs> I said, well, yes, sir. I was working there when I first came down here. <laughs> and so they, he named us the Sawmill Gang. And uh, that's how it, it lasted all this time. That, uh, we, were, we were the Sawmill Gang back in the back corner. Uh, you've attended many of the famous breakfasts that uh, Marcus Collins and the speaker used to have. What went on during that period? Well, I, w I wouldn't want to talk too much about that. That's a, that was quite a that was quite a thing. You know, Marcus would fix breakfast for the speaker, and uh, you know, they'd invite a few of us over. We'd go by and eat breakfast with them. Did you pass many bills? Well, they were discussed. Uh, they was. Uh, you would know pretty well when you left there who was, uh, if they had a chance, I, I would say. Let's talk for a minute about party politics in Georgia. We've seen a great decline in the strength of the Democratic Party over the past several years. What caused that? You know, Bob, I really, I don't know. Uh, we woke up, I, I remember uh, Governor Miller telling me he, uh, when the Ninth District, you know, the Mountain Area win, he said, uh, he asked me, he said, Colonel, what do you think happened in, for it to go? And, I, and looking back, Bob, I really don't know. I, I really don't. I, it was kind of a mystery to me when it happened. It happened really overnight. Yeah. Well, a lot of uh, Georgia Democrats think the state party uh, is too dependent on minorities and uh, labor unions and don't pay enough attention to areas, districts like yours. Uh, do you think that's true? Uh, I think that's true. And not only that, uh, of course, you know, the, uh, n the national, uh, I think, had a big uh, part in that, the national Democrats at the time, and that uh, they were a lot more liberal and than uh, these mountain counties. Mm -hmm. What do you think's ahead for the Democratic Party? Do you think that uh, uh, that you're you're a good, sound Democrat? Do you think that uh, that the Democrats can swing the pendulum? Bob, I don't know. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, I think one thing you know, you if a party gets uh, kind of asleep at the wheel, so to speak, that uh, 
they could they could sw- the Republican might could sway it back to the Democrat as much as the Democrats could could go in and and take it back over. So I I, I, just, I, I don't know. I've I've tried to think about it uh, to a degree, but uh, I've stayed pretty well out of politics since I came out. I mean, as far as going down there and getting involved in the I, I hardly ever go to the Capitol anymore, and uh, so I, I don't really know as much going on as as I did at one time. Carlton, looking back over the years you served in the legislature, do you have any regrets? Well, <clears throat> the biggest regret, like I said before, was uh, putting so much burden on my wife and my family. That's that's. That's the biggest regrets that I have. Uh, you know, it, it it was real hard on 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 them, and you don't know. And of course, when you're serving in politics, uh, your kids take the brunt of a lot that you do, and your family. And uh, I guess the only regrets I I'm real appreciative of of the people that helped me and what I was able to accomplish. But uh, that's that's the biggest regrets that I have on, on serving in the in the house. Uh, is there anything you'd have done differently? I I doubt it. I don't know. I just I tried to work hard uh, and uh, is to, to try to get accomplished back from my district, and that was, that was my main objective, and and I tried to do that and. Of course, I, you know, you fail in a lot of times, and you win some, and you lose some. But that that was that was in my goal from the time I went to the time I left to try to make Georgia a better place to live. What do you think has been your biggest accomplishment? Well, I guess I I think the. Uh, Appalachian Road was one thing. I, I worked hard on that. A lot of people helped me there. The corrections, I, I feel like that uh, I did have some degree of uh, uh, help in that that, that that I got credit for. And uh, education, I, I always tried to, uh, uh, we built a lot of, a lot of new schools. And and I worked real hard in that. So I guess those three things would be the best that what I would think would be uh, my greatest accomplishments. Did you have any disappointments? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you you do. It's uh, uh, I think that one of the greatest disappointments I had was. I introduced the gas tax bill and uh, to uh, increase the gas tax for the Department of Transportation. And at that time, they were selling bonds. And I'm not a great fe- great friend of bonds. I, I never did like bonds too much. And I was on the budget subcommittee, and I hardly ever voted for a bond of a 20-year bond for, for, for highway. Because uh, you know it's just roads won't last twenty years, and every state around us is is a lot higher than than Georgia, and that was one thing that uh, that I was disappointed in that I couldn't get the gas tax raised to take care of the transportation needs in this state. If one of your grandsons decided they would like to run for public office. What advice would you give them? Well, I'd tell them not while they're raising the family, but wait till they, <laughs> to, to wait. I just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's real hard. I love my grandsons tremendously, but uh, uh, it's awfully hard to raise a family and be a, in the General Assembly. You at one time represented uh, seven counties. That's a pretty good chunk of a congressional district. Did you ever think of running for a higher office? No, I never did. Uh, I I was approached uh, a time or two on Congress, but I, uh, I just never, 
I just didn't want to leave these mountains at guess Bob. And, uh, of course, that's, it had been a hard race for me to run. And I, I was, I was content to be at the Georgia House of Representatives as long as I was. 30 years. 30 years. 30 good years. Carlton, I want to thank you on behalf of the Richard Russell Library and the University of Georgia and myself for being with us on this program. Well, thank you, Bob. I, I, I appreciate your help. And I, I've always appreciated your friendship over the years, and I just want you to know I appreciate you coming and uh, to my home for this, and you're welcome back at any time. I'll come back. Thank you, sir.